welcome to Rebuilding Careers. My name is Bonnie Pomish. It's my honor to serve as the CEO of Working Wardrobes. And I am here today with the one and only Tammy Kim. I am so excited for you all to get to know more about Tammy. I'm not even going to try to sum up who this amazing lady is. Tammy, would you mind sharing a little bit with us about your background and a little bit about what became the foundation of who Tammy Kim is today? Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's a pretty long question, but um, I am currently serving on the Irvine City Council, uh, appointed as the vice mayor for the city of Irvine. I was elected in 2020 and uh, work for a nonprofit organization uh, serving the Asian American community. But prior to that, I actually served um, nearly two decades in corporate talent acquisition uh, for various Fortune 500 uh, uh, technology uh, companies and also uh, startups as well. So that's my background. And so, um, and I guess I could go on and on, but I'll let you ask the question that we can take it from there. So. <laughs> well, I'm a mom, I'm, I'm a daughter. <laughs> mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Right. These different like how, like these different hats we wear in life. And you're right. These different roles. But before you became a mom, um, you were a daughter, let's say, first. And I would love to hear a little bit about your upbringing. Like, what was it like where you grew up and what were the circumstances of your childhood? What laid the foundation for this incredible career and this commitment to creating a stronger community? There must have been something different about how you grew up. Yeah, um, so I actually grew up, I was raised in Michigan. I was raised in Flint, Michigan. Um, I was, um, uh, we we grew up in very difficult circumstances. We then moved to Baltimore, Maryland. So, uh, you know, my mom was a seamstress and my dad was a day laborer and they saved up to get a small business. So they were very small micro business owner um, in uh, in the city of Baltimore, like downtown, um, really in the heart of like the war on drugs, um, you know, during sort of that time. Uh, and, you know, with no means of health insurance or retirement savings, uh, I put my way, uh, put myself through college. Um, and that's really like lays the foundation of my background. And so, um, you know, everything that I have today is sort of built upon that and that set of experiences and framework. I grew up in Section 8 housing um, and was able to uh, work myself or, you know, build myself up uh, uh, through corporate America. And that's why I wasn't in politics earlier on, uh, because I couldn't even afford to do an internship. Uh, I guess I had to work. And so I mean, that really sort of lays out what I'm about, but, um, and really, you know, having lifted my family out of poverty uh, and help, you know, change our family circumstance, uh, I was really, you know, I worked my way through corporate America, uh, working my way up through vice president of global talent acquisition for a major um, global company. And, um, but then decided to give back and I started a nonprofit organization uh, that then became my full time job. And so, and started sort of my life, you know, Tammy 2.0 at that point. So, um, so that, I mean, that really kind of like lays the groundwork. And so that's mm -hmm. why a lot of things such as, um, you know, really being able to, to help vulnerable communities is something that I'm passionate about things like language access, but understanding what a job means and how it can transform somebody's life. I also understand what that means as well, because not only was I given that opportunity, um, but in being able to pave the road for other people to transform their lives um, is something that, you know, that's why I feel passionate about those issues. 
Absolutely. I mean, it sounds to me like your models were really hard workers and that it was anything is possible if you set your mind to it. And you certainly did set your mind to it, but not only in a way that was self-serving, in a way that uplifted yourself and invited other people to also be better versions of themselves. It takes um, it takes some real tenacity and dedication um, to overcome barriers like you faced as not just a child, but putting yourself through school. I'm curious when you talk about, you know, working and being able to do that, what, what was your first job? How did you earn your first paycheck? What do you remember about that? So my very first paycheck, I was 15 years old And it was, I I had other jobs before that. I I did babysitting. I took out people's garbage for, that was my first tussle at fourth grade. I took out people's trash for 25 cents a bag. And I would go all the way up in the apartments that I lived in to the very fourth floor. We didn't have elevators. So I would go up to the fourth floor, ask them if they would want me to take out their garbage. And I had a set, set, Uh, customer base. And that was, you know, providing me with my spending money. But in terms of an actual real paycheck, uh, where I paid taxes, and I made 335 an hour, I'm not trying to age myself, but that was the minimum wage back then. (laughs) And, um, and, but uh, it was a telephone solicitor. That's what they that was the actual job title was a telephone solicitor, which I guess they call telemarketer these days. And, um, that is what I did. And I would um, call people to offer them free lawn care analysis. Um, I still remember the intonation when I say free lawn care analysis and would set up appointments to have their free lawn care analysis. And, um, and I ended up being really good. And I was I was top producer and which meant that I was setting up the most appointments um, for people to have their free lawn care analysis. And then they, in turn, it was basically like weed killers, um, and gardeners essentially, but back in Michigan, most people did their own lawns. And so, um, that was, that was my first job. And it was during the summer months. And I did that for like three summers. Um, what did you learn? I mean, other than this, this intonation piece, it's hilarious, but it's so true that that's an enduring like memory that you have of how to say the word. What else did you learn from that, that position? I learned how to sell and how to close. And these are the skills that I use today. And when I train people or when I talk to interns, the most valuable skill you will learn is to that that closing skill and and that selling and being able to to mirror whatever it is that um, you know the the intonation of the behavior of people that you're talking to and really helping them find solutions and having a consultative approach to dealing with their uh, whatever it is, whether it's their lawn or whether it's in career. Um, and then you take that to the next level and how do you then close yourself in a job interview? So all of these things, it, it really, it literally stems from, from that time in my telemarketing or telephone solicitor, Mm -hmm. um, 15 year old Tammy. Wow. I want to learn more about this, Tammy, because I think you just drew this connection that's really impactful, which is, you know, our listeners are job seekers. They are people like you and me who have histories and futures. And right now they're in a moment that they might be looking to overcome a barrier between them and that next role, that next possibility. What would you impart as this wisdom about the close to our job seekers, especially like you said, maybe in an interview or maybe it's in a more casual setting where you're networking and able to to land something. Tell me what you know. It's don't give up. I mean, the no, you know, I mean, sometimes no is no, but sometimes no, you know, it just depends. And and really it's, you know, it's, it's asking those clarifying questions to get to that close. It's making sure that you're empathizing with whomever it is that you're engaging with to understand whatever objections they might have and to be able to address it and to not be afraid. You like, that's the thing we reserve ourselves and and we're reserved and we don't 
put ourselves out there by asking that follow-up question or whatever that might be. And it's really having the confidence and overcoming that um, to help get you to that next point of information. And it's just not being afraid to ask the question. Yeah. So if again, 15 year old Tammy trying to give you a free lawn care analysis and can we come Monday? Oh, Monday. No, that doesn't work. Tuesday, Tuesday at one o'clock. That doesn't work. What about Wednesday? Again, it's that never, you can phrase everything in the form of a question. And it's like never, it's just never giving up. And it's having the tenacity and just not being afraid to, to just push the boundaries. Mm -hmm. I think there's a quote, I'm probably going to misquote, but it's essentially like the, the answer is no, if you don't ask. And if exactly. you ask, that's the next step closer to, to yes. Exactly. That's exactly it. Asking the question is a step closer to yes, but mm -hmm. you've got to ask it. And so, you know, you take that in the form of a job interview. And again, it's asking that question. If you feel like you haven't, you know, your, your last couple of interviews haven't worked out and you're downtrodden and you feel like morally and mentally and physically discouraged, you have to ask yourself, did I ask the question? Did I ask the question that help will get help get to yes? And so you, you have to take that approach even in your job search, especially in your job search. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is what that means. <laughs> if you'd like, I would love to let's take a quick break and come back with some more tips from the amazing Tammy Kim. This is rebuilding careers. We'll be right back after this break. We all know someone who's out of work. Hundreds of thousands are unemployed in Southern California. Working wardrobes is here to help at no cost to you. Our career coaches will get you job ready. The time is now. Time to update your resume, time to practice interview skills, time to get job training, and time to learn new skills. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it can change your life. This is your time. Call Working Wardrobes at 714-210-2460. Speak with a career coach today. Welcome back to Rebuilding Careers. This podcast is with Tammy Kim today, and I'm Bonnie Pomish. Tammy, thank you so much for joining us. Right before the break, you were starting to give us some more tips about how to ask good questions that get us closer and closer to a yes. Anything yes. else you can add? Absolutely. So in an interview, uh, and while you're interviewing, you should think about closing myself. And so you think, what does that mean, closing myself? And it really means asking those follow-up questions to get to the point to where you're having them give you the position. So what does that mean? Here's an example of the question is, um, is when they ask, cause they will ask, do you have any questions? The answer is never no. Like, no, I think I'm good. The answer is where do I stack in front of the other candidates in comparison to the other candidates that you've interviewed. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask that question. Mm -hmm. That's a perfectly acceptable question. Mm -hmm. Because then you may actually get the answer of, well, maybe your customer service experience is not as strong as I would like. Having that knowledge then gives you the opportunity to address any concerns that they might have, for example. Or you may actually just want to ask that question. Um, if, if you ask like, how, where am I in comparison to the other candidates that you've met with? The answer might be like, oh yeah, you're, you're great, you're great. And then the follow-up question you may ask or the first question you might ask is, uh, do you have any concerns regarding my background? And then you'll hear whatever concerns that they might have about your background. 
Because once you've asked them that question, you're putting them on the spot in terms of them having to answer because they are in the position of filling a position and they need a certain skill set. So if you're lacking in a certain skill set, then that's the perfect opportunity for them to tell you, you have just opened up the door for them to answer the question that you in turn can help address and fill any voids. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like given that example that maybe you didn't share the experience you had 20 years ago, but now that you know that this is an important um, piece of information that's missing about you, now you have the opportunity to actually share it and address what they what they see as a gap, but they don't know you can fill. Exactly. And, and sometimes even during the interview, they didn't ask the question or they didn't sure. give you the opportunity to even address mm -hmm. whatever skills they like customer service or whatever skill that might be. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and it gives you then the opportunity to, to fill that gap that might be in their mind, but they, they mm -hmm. have able to articulate. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other question you ask is, what is your timeline? When are you looking to fill the position? And then lastly, what are the next steps? And that is a question that everyone forgets to ask is, what's the next step? That's also a form of closing yourself. So these are important questions that mm -hmm. help get you to where you need to be. I think that that's such true advice. And I, I love how this is generalizable beyond an interview, right? Because I can't tell you how many business meetings I have where that is the most important question. So now what? What's the next step in us moving this partnership forward or this agreement forward? So I love Tammy, thank you so much. That's so helpful on so many on so many levels. I think I'm also taking away from this that it's almost like we need to get out of our own way sometimes. And sometimes our insecurity and our lack of confidence um, is preventing us from asking the question. And that's what I'm really taking away from this is to make sure to ask. You There's have to ask because you are otherwise you're you're the barrier to your own success when you yeah. don't ask. Yeah. There are just countless number of things that we call barriers, right? In between us and where we're headed and working wardrobes helps about 6,000 people a year overcome lots of different barriers on the road to what we call gainful employment. And I think about the career that you described and wow, not only have you been gainfully employed, but you have used that employment to help make the world a better place. And you've done that in different um, you know, settings. I'd love to hear in your experience, has there been a barrier or an obstacle that you've overcome? And would you mind sharing, like, what was it and how did you overcome it on your road to where you are now? I mean, along the road, I've had lots of, <laughs> lots and lots of barriers. Um, but, I, you know, I would say one of the, the biggest barriers I've had is just having the lack of opportunity and having the lack of mentorship along the way, because especially, you know, in my case, uh, you know, my parents who don't speak English very well uh, at a different time in a different place where there weren't really any role models or people that look like myself um, helping to pave the way. Um, you know, I would probably call that more of a systemic barrier and just getting uh, getting in the right headspace to not allow myself to be uh, downtrodden, uh, not allowing myself to accept no as the answer. Yeah. And that I would say, is one of the biggest things that I've done that I try to coach and instruct other people is, you know, we're all faced with very, various systemic barriers, whether it's, you know, my parents didn't have enough money to send me to, you know, SAT prep school. I had to work my way. I couldn't do an internship because I couldn't afford it. Um, so therefore you're missing those opportunities. You're missing those uh, connections to network, to help get your foot in the door in other ways. Um, you know, these are 
these are systemic barriers, especially what people of color have to go through because we don't have that legacy built in. We don't have that yep. network. We don't have the my parents, friends or whomever like hobnobbing with people like my parents knew nobody. They had no they had no means of really doing anything for me. So I had to forge my own path. Um, and so, uh, but it, it's just, you can't give up and your own mindset is going to be half the battle. And this is what I like to say. And this is probably a weird thing to say, um, but it's so true. You fake it till you make it. Like, I don't think that that's, yeah, that, that is, you're not surprising me with that, but I think it's true. Like oftentimes I think I smile a lot and it's not because I'm always so happy, but it's because I want my body and my brain to be feeling happy and that it will sink in. And what you're describing really is this confidence, right? That if you don't have the confidence that like, I deserve to be here, I have something to contribute here. I am to make an impact then that is how you'll be received as, as though you don't. Yeah. And so all of this is, you know, is a fake it till you make it. And then on the flip side of that is perception is reality. So these are my two, if you could say I had a mantra in which I <laughs> like, that's what yeah. you have to do because otherwise, um, when you don't portray yourself as belonging in a space, you will never belong, period. Yeah. yeah. You will never be invited. No one's going to invite you to the table. Yeah. That's you really, this is like, own your. Yeah, you got to own it yourself. Mm -hmm. No one mm -hmm. will bring you to the table. Yeah. You have to remember that. You have to put yourself at the table. And even when you feel like you're a complete fraud, it's okay. That's normal. You oh, that imposter like syndrome is real. Yeah, yeah, it is normal. It is yeah. for real. Yes. Uh, and, but you have to just put on a smile and think to yourself, fake it till I make it. And yeah. that's where you will overcome uh -huh. a lot of those, your own fears. Well, and I think I'm mean, really hearing you say too, you're creating reality by virtue of creating this perception and you are, you know, projecting the person that you, maybe you're not feeling it on the inside, but you are, and that is what is. I think too, exactly. part of what you're describing with, you know, especially with your own upbringing, right, is that it's hard to ask for help. And if you are not a part of a network and a system that is there to help and support you in your success, where do you go? And I think this is why I love so much working wardrobes and this ability to be the, the space that is a safe haven for people who are brave enough to ask for help, to get that confidence, to create that perception, and to be able to not only land that job, but really gain full employment. Absolutely. Be absolutely. And, and, you know, just to, to really like add on that is... I think it's really important to have a place like working wardrobes where they're providing, I mean, think about it. Working wardrobes is to provide sort of that, that exterior confidence. And that's part of the fake it till you make it as well. When you look good, you feel good, you feel confident going into that interview. That's all part of that. That's part of the perception is reality. And the fact that, you know, working wardrobes is sort of that essence of what I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. And, but it's also, you know, taking advantage of, of what's there. Yeah. Taking well, that's just it. Of, yeah. Of the, of the, um, in a resource. Yeah. The resources, mm -hmm. um, the, the consultants that are there to help, you know, put your best self forward. So yeah. you have that inner strength and confidence to yeah. make it. Yeah. We help people close that knowledge gap. And to your point, make sure that the outside represents those updated insides. Well, before we wrap this podcast, I would like to ask you just one last question. And it's really a question to answer for yourself, Tammy. If, if you could speak to your younger self and give her advice, what wisdom would you share with her, which all of our listeners are also going to benefit from? 
Um, I would probably say the best thing is just to let it go. Like, just let it go. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. You just move forward, charge ahead and just wake up and it's a new day. That's oh, it. that's a really beautiful um, bookend, I think, because what you're really talking about too, is no matter what's going on, you can move past it. And mm -hmm. there is um, a saying that I, I learned from one of our clients, actually, which was grab a grab a piece of paper and start writing the next chapter. This is our life to live and create. It has been such a pleasure to have this conversation with you, Tammy. Thank you for imparting not only your wisdom, but truly your inspiration with all of us, the community, and of course, our Rebuilding Careers podcast listeners. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. This is Bonnie Pomish here with Tammy Kim. So glad to have had you today, Tammy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much and good luck to everyone.